This episode of News Dump is brought to you by Hawthorne. I want to apologize before we dive into today's video because we're going to be covering topics that our viewers will be tired of hearing about. Well, we've heard you loud and clear, but when something from a particular topic rises to these levels of absurdity, it is our duty to point and laugh, lest they be taken seriously by the public. I assure you that it was not my intention to start today's episode off with news about crypto assets. God damn it. And we will do our best to ignore that aspect of it because there's more to it than just existing in the NFT space. Okay, so there's more. Though it is funny that two NFT projects in particular were launched specifically when the entire marketplace has crashed with no signs of real recovery on the horizon. Great timing. Excellent uh -huh. timing. Now, before we talk about the giant vagina in the room, Madonna's vagina, mm -hmm. we do have to bring up a project whose timing in the space, actually, it feels poetic. It's, it's, it fits the subject matter. Yeah. Um, it is the perfect, the perfect way to launch an NFT if what the NFT is portraying is clumsy, absent-minded. Um, and shows you know, up at the perfect time. Just always time. in the wrong place at the wrong time. Just always has like uh, unfortunate things happening to it. That's right, folks. Right in time for a nearly 99% loss in interest in the digital collectibles market and a drastic devaluation of the assets that these tokens are backed by, Mr. Bean has... <laughs> stumbled into the <laughs> NFT space with perfect comedic timing. The British series, Mr. Bean, actually, it only, you know, this is the craziest thing. It only consisted of 15 episodes. But that, that's what I always hear from, uh, you'll see like posts online where people are like, I watched this show throughout my entire childhood and I do not believe that it was only 15 episodes. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm pretty sure I must have watched the entire series when yes. I rented it from like Blockbuster Video. Yeah. Which is crazy. Same with, uh, like, it's like the <laughs> monsters in Gilligan's Island. You think of those as, like, legacy, long-standing sitcoms, but those were only around for a very short amount of time. Like, I think Monsters was, like, two years or something. Wow. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, despite that limited uh, screen time, Mr. Bean has a legacy. The legacy of Mr. Bean has cemented in, it's been cemented in British pop culture history and also, like, has it, a lot of fans around the world. It transitioned over into America pretty seamlessly. I mean, they made the, when they made the Mr. Bean movie, it took place in the United States. Yeah, we love uh, a chaotic oaf. Yeah. <laughs> but now at the worst possible time to get involved in the NFT space, Mr. Bean has done just that. And yes, the art is cheaply done uninspired. It looks like something you'd create in an online avatar creator. It's not good. It's, a, it's apparently uh, pretty similar to a, a Mr. Bean cartoon show that exists, but okay. uh, it still doesn't look like something anyone would want to collect. Okay. Yeah, the project was launched with a company called FOMO Labs. Big red flag there. I'm not sure I would uh, trust a company that literally names themselves FOMO. If you don't get in these uh, Mr. Bean NFTs as soon as possible, you are you're going to feel like you really missed out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, kind of a red flag. And uh, so the Mr. Bean NFTs, they will be available to members of the Bean List sometime next week before being released to the public. So uh, if you're not on the bean list, you might already be missing out. Is it using its own token called Magic Beans? <laughs> it should that, be. That would be very I on think, the nose. I think, unfortunately, it's actually backed by Ethereum, which is, uh, as we've pointed out many times Come before, uh, terrible for the environment. Yeah. There are plenty of other uh, worthless tokens you could back this by, but whatever. Uh, I think one tweet in particular sums up the Mr. Bean foray into the crypto space. So we'll let this user named the guillotine implier. That's such a good name. <laughs> get the last word on, on why this is so funny. The Mr. Bean NFT rules because it's extremely in character for him to come bumbling into the scene right after a catastrophic market crash. Yeah. All right. With that out of the way, let's talk about Madonna and uh, her recent resurgence in notoriety thanks to some pretty odd TikTok videos which has all somehow led to the world being able to watch her grow a tree out of her digital vagina. Now, if you haven't checked in on one of the biggest pop stars of the 1980s, you might be shocked to see some of her content, which almost entirely consists of close-up videos of her face while either her own music or whatever song is popular on the platform plays in the background. It's, it's literally just her staring into the camera this woman um, is almost 70 years old, and I, I do got to hand it to her. She has remained, she has forced her way into relevancy for At various times throughout five her, decades Yeah, now. she had big resurgences in the 2000s. Uh, she kissed Britney Spears, yeah. another person who makes chaotic social media videos. That one from like the early 2000s that sampled ABBA. Mm -hmm. It's a bop. Yeah. Still play it at weddings. But yeah, you could probably consider all these TikToks to be performance art or something. It is a bit odd in the same way that Britney Spears 
posts over the years have come off as a bit odd with a, a lot of similar comments being posted, which range from, are you okay? To everyone shut up and let her do her things. Yeah. And we understand that specifically regarding Madonna, it's probably difficult to be an aging pop star who was also a sex icon for a majority of her career. She released a book called Sex in the early 90s. She did. Mm -hmm. uh, so hey, we're, look, we're not trying to judge the what appears to be extensive plastic surgery that she's had done, but it's easy to see why someone would be a little freaked out seeing any of her latest videos after maybe not seeing her in a couple years. I wonder what Madonna's up to. Oh, oh God. She is 63 years old, for Christ's sake. I mean, she would look probably a lot different if she was aging naturally without the help of plastic surgery. And I mean, to her credit, she does stay, she uh, she puts, she works hard. It's not just going under the knife. She she stays in shape. She stays in shape and uh, she takes she's, care she's of herself. very proud of her body. Yeah. Uh, clearly. So, look, all for po body positivity. And uh, it's just, the videos are odd. She's just staring into the camera. Yeah. It's uh, very like, hello, fellow kids. I'm on the app. But also, like, uh, it feels like a really dark Tim and Eric sketch at some points. At Madonna, she's so random. <laughs> Do kids still say call everything random like they did 20 years ago? I don't. I don't know. Actually, that was that, that was that was cool. Well, it's now that, so like, random. The 90s are having a big resurgence. So, like, the second yeah. peak of Madonna's career is also probably on their radar. Yeah. Anyway, Madonna's still trying to shock people, and on the heels of her oddly received resurgence online, she has collaborated with arguably the most famous artist in the NFT space for a set of digital collectibles that feature the singer giving birth to insects and a very large tree. Here's the independent with more. Fans have shared their confusion at Madonna's newly unveiled 3D model of her vagina, which features in a fully nude collection of non-fungible tokens. The pop singer has partnered with digital artist Beeple to produce a trio of NFT videos titled Mother of Technology, Mother of Creation, and Mother of Evolution, which feature an up-close display of her vagina giving birth to insects, butterflies, and trees. While the video graphics are being auctioned off, with proceeds going to three nonprofits that focus on supporting women and children worldwide, they are currently available to view online. And by the way, you, there you can literally right-click save as on these videos. They're yeah. not even in any kind of protected media player. Yeah. So... They're yours to keep. That's that's your video now. But you don't own the real one, yeah. a.k.a. the receipt. In a statement, Madonna explained that, quote, all works were conceived with a 3D scan, and that she, quote, wanted to investigate the concept of creation, not only the way a child enters the world through a woman's vagina, but also the way an artist gives birth to creativity. And look, at the very least, she, she claims the proceeds are going to charities that support women and children. So I, I guess that's the silver lining here, outside of the fact that both the Madonna and Mr. Bean NFTs are on Ethereum, which is still notoriously terrible for the environment. Um, it's just that I, I, that's the one out of the remaining coins that NFTs are backed on that have has any kind of remaining value, I guess, is there's the reason. value and utility, and there's yeah. a, big, a big enough network to support it, I guess. But yeah, um, yeah so efficient. I think the one with the tree sold for like 300000 uh, The one with, I think, either the caterpillar or the butterflies, uh, sold to like a a crypto uh, money transfer service, so I, they, maybe they're doing some marketing. That's with it or wild because if this was even six months ago, uh, it probably would have gone for millions. Millions, yeah. Well, that's the thing is if uh, you know if Madonna holds on to these tokens and doesn't give them to the charities right away, yeah. why those charities could get millions, or they could get nothing, but or she they could, could also get she millions. Could convert them to a stable coin mm -hmm. and earn you know twenty percent interest just by keeping it on an exchange. We all know Madonna loves out. pegging when it comes to stable coins. She does. Yes. But speaking of computer-generated art, Kendrick Lamar released his latest album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, on Friday this week. And the album covers a lot of difficult topics with incredible beats and lyricism. But yeah. in the lead-up to the release of the album, Kendrick dropped a music video for the song The Heart Part 5. And in the video, Kendrick's face shifts seamlessly between other prominent or controversial black celebrities like O.J. Simpson, Kanye West, Jussie Smollett, Will Smith, Kobe Bryant, and Nipsey Hussle. Um, it's pretty unsettling how realistic and believable this all looks. Uh, we haven't seen a deep fake video look this believable since the release of Sassy Justice from the creators of South Park, which features a fake investigative reporter who is literally a deep fake of former President Donald Trump. And if the quality and level of production skill necessary to pull off something this believable looks familiar, that's because the Kendrick Lamar music video was actually produced by South Park creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker using the same studio that they've developed uh, specifically for this kind of deep fake technology called Deep Voodoo. 
which uh, reportedly has a team of at least 20 people working specifically on deep fake technology and productions. And in an article written after the launch of Sassy Justice, the New York Times wrote, Sassy Justice is partly their attempt to educate their viewers about deep fakes and demystify a potentially terrifying subject. Quote, before the big scary thing of coronavirus showed up, everyone was so afraid of deep fakes, Stone said. We just wanted to make fun of it because it makes it less scary. That's one way of looking at it. Sure. So the music video also fe uh, appears to just be the beginning for the collaborations between Matt Stone, Trey Parker, and Kendrick Lamar, as it was announced all the way back in January of this year that the trio were going to produce a feature-length movie together. Mm -hmm. uh, here's what Variety said at the time. The Grammy-winning rapper Kendrick Lamar's P.G. Lang Company has teamed with Matt Stone and Trey Parker's Park County Banner to produce a new feature film for Paramount Pictures. The live-action comedy, written by Vernon Chapman, will depict the past and present coming to a head when a young black man who is interning as a slave reenactor at a living history museum discovers that his white girlfriend's ancestors once owned his. Hijinks and Sue, I Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Lamar and P.G. Lang partner Dave Free will produce the project alongside Stone and Parker. Um... Sounds like a fun romp. Yeah. Uh, but yes, the, the music video is incredible, the way it like transitions and how perfect it looks. It's yeah. pretty crazy. But let's move over to another recently announced project that we're definitely anticipating, even though it's going to be an emotional watch, maybe a hard watch. Uh, Netflix has announced that Norm MacDonald secretly filmed a stand-up special for their streaming platform before he ultimately succumbed to his private nine-year battle with acute leukemia. Uh, here's The Hollywood Reporter with more. Norm MacDonald, who died last September at the age of 61, privately shot an unreleased one-hour stand-up special. The acclaimed Saturday Night Live actor-comedian known for his deadpan delivery was diagnosed with cancer in 2012, but kept his illness private. He was working on new material for a Netflix special when he had to go into the hospital in the summer of 2020. Quote, his test results were not good, so during the heart of COVID-19 pandemic and literally the night before going in for a procedure, he wanted to get this on tape just in case, as he put it, things went south. Lori Jo Hoekstra, McDonald's longtime producing partner, tells The Hollywood Reporter, it was his intention to have a special to share if something happened. The result was a stand-up special shot in McDonald's living room. The actor filmed the entire hour in a single take. Quote, he looks great and the material's fantastic, Hoekstra says. As it turns out, McDonald made it through the medical procedure just fine and the footage was literally tossed in a closet. But McDonald became very ill a year later before his special could be properly filmed before an audience. Quote, he ended up getting sicker last August and September and he remembered that he had shot this and asked me to find it so he could watch it, Hoekstra says. He ended up watching it before he passed away. McDonald even suggested a characteristically self-deprecating title for the hour, Nothing Special. Netflix will release the surprise program, Norm McDonald, Nothing Special, on May 30th. Yeah. Wild. Uh, so the article points out that the program will include clips of Adam Sandler, Conan O'Brien, Dave Chappelle, David Letterman, David Spade, and Molly Shannon discussing McDonald during the recent uh, Netflix is a Joke Fest. And according to a podcast hosted by David Spade and Dana Carvey, uh, the special was actually screened for his friends at his memorial. Um, so it, it's probably going to be a tough watch. Uh, it's definitely going to be a special fitting end to an incredible career that was cut short by a terrible disease. Um, it'll probably be extremely funny. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's hard to segue out of a story like that, but while we're on the topic of Netflix, it looks like the company is uh, already trying out some new features to potentially keep subscribers or reel in some new ones. Um, here's another one that we didn't think they would probably ever do, uh, including their admission that they might be doing ads. Uh, it looks like they're going to try live streaming. Fuck it. Yeah. So while the company says that their live streamed offerings are still in the early stages of development, it's certainly an interesting way for the company to embrace a community aspect to content consumption. And we're sure that this is just an option with the content being, I uh, assume, available for streaming at any point immediately following the live stream. Yeah. But still, it'll be interesting to see exactly what type of content they think is going to bring in a large live audience when anyone could just watch something at their own leisure instead. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, the only thing worth watching live, aside from Twitch streams, is big events, award shows, sports, yeah. that kind of thing. And even those numbers are constantly dwindling in a lot of cases. Um, here's Deadline to explain. It plans to roll out the capability, which Netflix confirmed was in the early stages of development, for its swath of unscripted shows and stand-up specials. It would mean that Netflix would be able to use it for live voting for competition series and talent contests such as its upcoming dance competition series, Dance 100, from The Circle producer, Studio Lambert. Similarly, it could use it if it decides to bring back its Netflix as a Joke Festival. The live comedy event featured around 300 stand-up performances across LA, including Dave Chappelle, Larry David, and Pete Davidson. Many of the shows were being filmed with plans to air around 12 of them on the service. 
In the future, it could potentially air shows live, albeit with a few seconds delay in case things get saucy. Other options include for live reunions for shows such as Selling Sunset, which just aired a reunion special for its fifth season. The move opens up the potential to order a whole new raft of unscripted series to use the technology, bringing it into line with the linear networks, which often air live specials for big competition series such as ABC's American Idol and Dancing with the Stars, which is moving to Disney+. Plus. Oh. Um, so, yeah, they, this is Deadline saying that it could be used for Netflix as a joke. It seems like Netflix is kind of just leaning more towards reality series and competition series. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it looks like for the time being, it's just going to be live streaming stuff uh, that we don't really have much interest in. Though a live stream of their comedy festival, w it would be cool. Um, and by the way, they could have seen that tackle happen live. I was just going to point out uh, the Dave Chappelle shows weren't filmed. So oh. there was no plan to release those ever, apparently. Uh, and there, so there's no footage, uh, like high quality Netflix footage of okay. the attack. Um, it was just 12 out of the multiple uh, performances that were happening. So while those will make it, it, it appears as though there was never any intention to film the Dave Chappelle one. Okay. Uh, anyways, before we get into the rest of the news from this week, let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, Hawthorne. Have you ever wondered how your favorite athletes ensure that their grooming products are up to the task? They use Hawthorne. Steph Curry says he can't live without their body wash, and Zach Levine shows their quiz to tailor his perfect cologne. And this summer, Hawthorne caught up with the Houston Texans' Tyrod Taylor on what mattered to him. Uh, his answer? Doing his best, giving back, and taking care of himself. So while Tyrod's been working hard all offseason to support his team, he leaned on Hawthorne to upgrade his grooming game. Hawthorne is a premium men's grooming brand that makes it quick and easy to be your best with confidence, with skincare and hair care made just for you. They use data from hundreds of thousands of customers and recommend perfect products for your body chemistry, skin type, hair type, and lifestyle. So to get started, first take Hawthorne's quiz. They ask things like what your skin concerns are, what areas you'd like to focus on, hair needs, how bad that BO is, what your goals are, and more in order to pin down the product that's right for you. At the end of the quiz, you'll view customized products tailored to your body, skin, hair, and lifestyle. Hawthorne stands by their customers, so if you're not completely satisfied, they will retail your products for free based on your feedback and pay for the shipping, so there's truly no risk. So get ready for whatever comes your way this season by taking Hawthorne's quiz today. Go to hawthorne.co and use promo code NEWSDUMP to get 10% off your first purchase. That is H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O, promo code NEWSDUMP. Hawthorne.co, promo code NEWSDUMP. Check it out today. All right, back to the news. And we regret to inform you that the right still cannot meme, despite fully believing the contrary. Mm -hmm. And this week, we've got further proof of this, thanks to what appears to be a, a, a parlor-exclusive show hosted by disgraced BuzzFeed staff writer Benny Johnson, who was fired from the company after it was revealed that many of his articles for the outlet were plagiarized. Yeah. He did what many do after they were exposed. Uh, he went full conservative grifter and was quickly employed by outlets like The Daily Caller and Newsmax. And now he's hosting a show exclusive to Parler yeah. called The Left Can't Meme. And it is, uh, it's certainly something. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially just him reacting to right-wing memes about crying libs and Elon Musk. I mean, they're all pretty uninspired, generally lazy, and legitimately unfunny in many cases. But he still puts in the effort. He laughs right along and explains exactly what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, hey, the, look. Best, the best memes are the ones that you got to explain. Yes. There's Elon Musk on a rocket. <laughs> it's funny because he has a rocket company. Uh huh. Now, we can't show you everything, but rest assured that everything else included in the videos, they're basically the same quality. Here's a little taste. Welcome to the world exclusive premiere of The Left Can't Meme. Musk memes, so hot right now. And the people at Twitter are like, I feel like I've taken crazy pals. Here is the le here is the libs being fired off like rockets. Very funny, very good. Uh, here's, here's Elon. Whipping people out of the, the temple that is Twitter. <laughs> triggered Rhapsody. Triggered Rhapsody. Very good. Queen reference. The triggered people screaming. <laughs> re the re rocket. Yes, of course. Classic. Uh, but speaking of Twitter, though, looks like. And again, I'm sorry we have to talk about this. It looks like Elon Musk might not want Twitter after all. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm tired, I'm exhausted, and I want to stop hearing about him. And we did bring it up on this week's episode of Tech News Day, but uh, he's probably having a little buyer's remorse after offering them 40-something billion dollars. 
And he could have just waited a few weeks and saved a ton of money thanks to the entire tech sector crashing yeah, in value. Yeah, I mean, he, he pitched them what was widely seen as an overvalued uh, amount at the time. And that was uh, before an entire month of just, like, stock market death spiral. So. Yeah, and it's because he wanted them to just sign it over immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, either way, he seems to be mm, rethinking his big idea to buy out the social media website. And uh, he's blaming his second thoughts on bot accounts, which is clearly something that he was well aware of before securing that funding necessary to buy Twitter. Because one of his goals from the start was getting rid of bot accounts. Yeah. Also, uh, I don't know if this is still the case, but for a while there, the vast majority of bot accounts that you saw just scrolling through Twitter were, uh, uh, you know, fake Elon accounts. So yeah, supporting him. To, like scam people in like crypto scams. Yeah, it was a lot of companies buying positive feedback. Yeah. Amazon had a big one. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyways, here's uh, the latest on all of this from Reuters. Elon Musk tweeted on Friday that his $44 billion cash deal for Twitter was temporarily on hold while he waits for the social media company to provide data on the proportion of its fake accounts. Musk, the world's richest person, decided to waive due diligence when he agreed to buy Twitter on April 25th in an effort to get the San Francisco-based company to accept his best and final offer. This could make it harder for him to argue that Twitter somehow misled him. Since Musk inked his deal to acquire Twitter, technology stocks have plunged amid investor concerns over inflation and a potential economic slowdown. The spread between the offer price and the value of Twitter shares had widened in recent days, implying less than a 50% chance of completion as investors speculated that the downturn would prompt Musk to walk away or seek a lower price. Twitter deal temporarily on hold pending details supporting calculation that spam slash fake accounts do indeed represent less than 5% of users, Musk told his more than 92 million Twitter followers. Or is it that many? <laughs> yeah, who knows? That's why we're, probably what he's angry about. Uh, under the terms of Musk's contract to Twitter, he is entitled to ask the company for information on its operations following the signing of the deal, but this is meant to help him prepare for his ownership of Twitter not to carry out due diligence and reopen negotiations. It's like he's trying to buy a, a house in the red-hot housing market that's existed over the past five years or so. No contingencies. Yeah. No inspection. I if you if you're buying a house, please, if they say no inspection, walk away. Yeah. You you want to inspect. Uh so yes, this is um it has to be causing even more chaos. People have already Twitter. like uh, people have quit, but people have all also been like asked to leave Twitter. Like there's been a huge uh, yeah, organizational there was a, an executive there. who tweeted this week that uh, yeah. this was not his decision. Um, yeah, if the initial buyout wasn't enough to cause chaos, uh, the future of the company being completely in jeopardy at this point has to be yeah. fucking with people. Uh, just yesterday, even before Musk, Musk put his hold on the deal. Current Twitter CEO Parag Agrawal sent out a memo about firing executives and putting the company on a hiring freeze, according to reporting from The Verge. And at this point, we wouldn't be surprised at all if Musk knew how much chaos that he could cause for the company and is actually trying to devalue it so that he can pull out and buy them out for even less, which would make his $1 billion penalty for doing this almost pointless. Because at this point, the company's lost well over a billion dollars in value. I'm so tired of all this. I know. I it, it fucking sucks. This season of uh, whatever this, this tech world shit is. Boring. Tired of hearing about it. Either yeah. buy it or don't. Yes. But speaking of Twitter bots, would you believe that the Oscars fan favorite Twitter contest was rigged in favor of Zack Snyder uh, through a bunch of Twitter bot accounts? I, I know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Snyderverse weirdos using bots to achieve their aims? I, I cannot, cannot believe yeah, it. This is... Unbelievable. We are as shocked as you are. Yes. Uh, here's The Wrap with more on that shocking accusation. The Wrap has learned that the Academy's fan favorite and cheer moment awards, <laughs> the Twitter polls allowing regular folks at home to vote online in the weeks ahead of the March 27th ceremony for the for their own best picture of choice, as well as their favorite movie moment of all time, appear to have been rigged by automated online bot accounts backing the work of Justice League filmmaker Zack Snyder. The reporting goes on to say that, that, that uh, two reports from TweetBinder, a hashtag analytics tool, show that the most active contributors to the polls for hashtag Oscars fan favorite and hashtag Oscars cheer moment appears to have been automated bot accounts that cast thousands of fake votes. Vanity Fair unpacks the expose further by adding that The Wrap also pointed out some weird anomalies in polling, including significant one-day spikes in voting, such as a February 27th leap to 25,000 votes after weeks of daily totals between 4,000 and 15,000. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit weird. Yeah, again, we are 
We are shocked. I can't believe it. I cannot believe. Say it ain't so. Yeah. Uh, I, honestly, appalled that the, the greatest institution for film credibility, the Oscars, could fall victim to such obvious deception. It really paints the Oscars in a negative light, a, a firebrand that yeah. has done nothing wrong in recent years. This is the most controversial thing to happen to the Oscars in as long as I can remember. Did you see the rumor that uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is replacing, this is a rumor, that is replacing Will Smith as the genie in, in Aladdin? I did not see that. Which is real rich considering The Rock built his career on he, slapping people. Yeah. <laughs> The, I, in front of thousands. There's hundreds of hours of footage of The Rock assaulting yes. other men. So I don't know what's going on yeah. internally at Disney, but they're clearly blind to these severe yeah. problems. Wow. Uh-huh. I can't believe it. I'm shocked by so many things in the movie industry. But this week in particular. Anyway, we'll leave it with some fun stuff for the weekend. Yeah. Look to the skies on Sunday night, because we're getting a total lunar eclipse. That is, it's going to make the moon look blood red. Hello, vampires. Hello, werewolves. Get out there and see the spooky moon. So according to Earth Sky, a partial eclipse will begin at 1027 p.m. Eastern Time Sunday with the total lunar eclipse starting at 1129 p.m. Eastern Time. And the whole process will last until around 2 a.m. Eastern. According to CNN, people in South America and in the eastern part of North America will have a great view of the lunar eclipse. The total lunar eclipse will be visible in much of Africa, Europe, and South America, and most of North America. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, West Coast. I don't like the sound of that. West Coast going to be a little difficult. Sorry, everybody. Where are my lunar eclipse? Exactly. <laughs> After all we've been through this week, <laughs> we deserve to see the blood red moon. Where's my lunar eclipse? Uh, I want a lunar eclipse, Daddy, and I want it now. <laughs> We're going to have to fly to the East Coast. <laughs> Gah. Yeah, we might be out of luck here on the West Coast because, uh, well, for one reason, it won't be fully dark yet by the time no. it starts. And uh, the positioning of the moon, uh, also a little bit difficult that we early. We might have to get up on a very big hill. Yes. Climb, uh, get on top of a building and just hope yeah. that it gets dark out. Um, though, yeah, I mean, during the peak, it might be worth checking out. It will yeah. be dark then, but it's still not going to be as cool as uh, what everyone on the East Coast is seeing. Well, enjoy it. Also, uh, they, they finally did another West Coast launch uh, for SpaceX or whatever this today, oh. but they did it in the middle of the day. You can't even enjoy it. Can't even see the weird contrails that everyone thinks are UFO, UFOs every single time. The, it, we should. There should be a law that says you can only do rocket launches at night when they look really cool. Yeah, I agree. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of News Dump. Uh, look, we have two uh, very fun for the wrong reason episodes. Shot this week. in Freud. Yeah. Um, one is uh, our complete coverage of not just the crypto collapse, but specifically. Uh, one of the things that caused it, the Luna yeah. and uh, stablecoin chaos and the resulting outcry after that. And yeah, all of our numbers that we used in it are, are wildly inflated compared to now. Uh, that shit is even more worthless than it was. By the time the, the video time. went up, it was like 0. 0.00003 yeah. or something like that. And then, of course, by the time the video went up, uh, there were uh, people like, you guys are stupid. I bought the dip, and now look at look at the crypto numbers, and it's like, yeah, they were green, but if you literally, as they keep saying all the time, zoom out, if yeah. you zoomed out to like three months, six months, even a year, it's still down significantly, and then today it was down again. So like, yeah. good for you if you uh, buy your, the dip and see the return. It's your money. Exactly. But uh, needless to say, huge collapse in the crypto markets. Also, a collapse that happened a year ago, but it, we're finally seeing the inside details of then the MTV for gainer, gamers, and uh, all of the stuff that uh, failed over at that company, which were painfully yeah. obvious to anyone who's worked in the industry. Check out both of those episodes over here. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the join button. Hit the bell. Leave a comment. And we'll be back soon for some weekly weird news. See you then. Bye.